If you live in the United States, odds are you've never heard of Chinese mega telecom corp Huawei. But these might get you to perk up and take notice. The brand new Mate 10 and Mate 10 Pro smartphones bear a sleek glass design, huge batteries, and some familiar bonus features. But is there enough here to finally make Huawei a big name in the US? Well, I'm Michael Fisher, and let's find out in a Mr. Mobile First Look. As similar as these seem at a glance, there are actually big differences between the Mate 10 and 10 Pro, with the latter packing some confusing compromises, despite its haughty moniker. For one thing, both the SD slot and the headphone jack have been retained on the Mate 10, but eliminated from the Pro, replaced by more RAM and onboard storage. And while the Pro has the more modern-looking display, with a stretched OLED panel in place of its sibling's squat LCD, it actually makes a significant sacrifice in resolution. Specifically, the Pro packs in almost a hundred fewer pixels per inch than the Mate 10. Probably the most significant hardware upgrade to the bigger phone is IP67 dust and water resistance, which is welcome, but really should be included on both models at this point. While I'm not sure the world needed another pair of all-glass smartphones, I am glad Huawei ditched its stale aluminum design for something fresh. These phones look really good, thanks in large part to a new accent stripe calling out the dual camera system. That system is a promising one with Leica optics, one color sensor and one monochrome, both with big apertures, and optical stabilization on the primary. Naturally, how the pictures ultimately come out will depend on more than just the hardware. Both Mate 10s are powered by the Kirin 970 chipset, which will help it distinguish certain subjects like food or flowers and automatically change its settings to produce the best shot. The processing goes beyond photos. Huawei loaded Microsoft Translator onto a few demo units at the press briefing, and it certainly seemed speedier at rendering Chinese and English than on another phone. Take this with a grain of salt, though. The settings weren't the same and couldn't be made the same, so I'm going to recheck this in the full review. Also, Huawei still thinks it can do better than Google when it comes to things like power efficiency and memory management. So it's using its own custom file system and AI engines instead of those included in Android Oreo. I know that sounds kind of gobbledygooky, but it has real-world implications that you'll probably care about. See, for the second year running, the company says it's focused on building a phone that lasts. Its aging model says the Mate 10 should retain 89% of its performance after 18 months of use. That's a big deal if you keep your phone more than a year, and we should see more optimizations over time as Huawei makes APIs available to developers to hook into its custom silicon. I just wish the company was able to do all this without also forcing us into an interface that feels like, well, a hasty repaint of the iPhone's iOS. Speaking of things inspired by other things, hey, the Mate 10 has Samsung DeX. You remember the feature that lets your Android phone sub in as a desktop computer on any big screen you've got lying around? It's here, in all its multi-window glory. There's no dock. All you need is a USB to HDMI cable with DP support. And Huawei actually improves on DeX in one respect, with an idea lifted from Microsoft's Continuum. You can use your phone as a trackpad while it's connected. Cool. You can't charge the phone while it's connected to a TV, but odds are you won't need to. Whether you get the Mate 10 or the 10 Pro, you've got a 4,000 mAh battery pack to draw from. That's 21% bigger than the Galaxy Note 8's, 37% larger than the iPhone 8 Plus's. We'll have to wait for the full review to see how well it holds up, but I'll put it this way. Huawei would really have to screw up not to get impressive endurance out of batteries this big. A side note, there's no wireless charging here, but the wired charger in the box can take you from 0 to 58% in 30 minutes. Huawei is keeping exact pricing and availability close to its vest for now, but those of us in the United States have a simplified choice when it does arrive. I've been told that the Mate 10 Pro is the only one that'll make its way to the US. No regular 10 here. Whether it makes a splash here will depend on whether Huawei is able to get it onto shelves at one of the major US carriers. And as of yet, there's no word on that either. Nevertheless, 
With a fresh new design, promising battery life, and a camera that builds on a legacy of very impressive Huawei cameras from the past year, I'm more excited to try this than I have been about any previous Mate. And I'll be giving it the full review pass just as quickly as I can. Please be sure you're subscribed to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube so you don't miss it, and drop a comment on YouTube or at The Mr. Mobile on Twitter letting me know if you'd also like me to test the Porsche Design Special Edition, which I didn't have a chance to go hands-on with, but which I expect to see soon. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.